How's it going guys? This is Jake here once again with a brand new video. Today I'm going to be talking about the two lost albums from Headless's discography. Now, Headless is a rapper that I've been a fan of for a very long time. I've enjoyed literally every release that this guy's put out in some kind of way. For uh, someone who's been making music since the mid-90s, this guy's music is seriously underrated. I feel as if more people should definitely listen to his music. He has made a total of 16 albums, excluding the EP releases and the mixtape releases, and all the other bands that he's been involved with. That is a lot of music. That's a lot of material. That's something that, in my opinion, is really cool because... A lot of artists usually don't make that many releases, so I think that it's really impressive. If you look on the Headless Media Fire, which I believe you can only access that through a private link, I might be wrong about that though, that is the only way to access certain albums because they are unavailable on the internet. Like, um, the Run On Em, Blast On Em album from 2005, it's not on the internet. Field of Crushed Dreams from 2012 was not on the internet. Name Dropper from 2014. A lot of the albums are unavailable online. I'm assuming it's because of guidelines, because I know that websites are beginning to ban offensive music now. So that could be why, but I'm not completely sure. I'd have to get more details on that. But on Mediafire, this is where you can pretty much find all of his albums, including the bands that he's been involved with, the mixtape releases, so on and so on. However, when you're reading down the numbers for each individual album, you notice that it goes 1, 2, and then it skips straight to 5. Which, I was really confused about that at first, because I had no fucking clue why the numbers were skipped. But then I decided to read his biography, which I don't remember where I read this, it was on another website. But I learned that albums 3 and 4 are lost media as of now. The albums have been missing since around the time they were made, and they have never been published ever since they were initially lost. And it's really interesting. I'm honestly, like, I'm dead set on somehow finding these albums. Like, I seriously want to listen to them someday. I'm probably the only one who's gonna say this, but I absolutely fucking love the first two albums. This is before he completely changed his style. It's before he completely... It's before he got the, produ the professional production and so on and so on. So, the first two albums are like really raw horrorcore albums. I really enjoy them. I really think that they're a piece of history. And I would love to own a copy of them someday. But the third and fourth albums are the only ones that are missing from the disco from the Headless discography. They are two albums that I seriously want to listen to someday, but I don't think I'm ever going to be able to. Because when you think about it, these albums have been missing since... Well, I've heard that the, fr that the third album was released in 2001, and the... Fourth one was released in 2002, but I can't guarantee if that's the truth or not. But if they have been missing for that long, then chances are it's really low. It's a low possibility that these will ever be recovered, and it's honestly really depressing to think about. The first Lost album, and this is one that I seriously want to listen to. Okay, as I said before, I'm a huge fan of his first two albums. I think they're seriously underrated. And sadly, they're not on streaming services. They're exclusive to the Mediafire page. But the third album was exactly like how the first two were, according to Headless himself. He said that they have a, that they have a similar production. They have the same vocal style. He said that this album is pretty much exactly like the first two albums in various ways. And this album is one that I seriously want to listen to. He's talked about it a lot in the past. He's described a couple of tracks off of it. One specific track that he continuously mentions, which I seriously want to hear now. There was a song on the album called Under Your Bed. I think that's the name of it. He said that that's one of his favorite tracks that he really wishes he could listen to again. Needless to say, Life Till Death is a missing album, and it's one that I seriously want to listen to someday. Especially if it sounds like the first two albums, because I would love to hear more music like that. Sadly, though, 
if you listen to his new stuff, you have a, you know for a solid fact he's never going to come back to that. So they're they're fun to listen to. They're nostalgic, and you know I've went on enough about it. Life till death. That is the first lost album, and it's something that I seriously want to get a hold of. The other lost album, and he claims this is the worst album he's ever made from his entire discography. So. This is also an album that I seriously want to listen to at some point. This was also the first album to not have a parental advisory logo on it, which I thought was kind of strange. But I'm pretty sure it's still explicit, though, because, again, Run On and Blast On Them and Field of Crushed Dreams didn't have parental advisory logos, but they're, like, really explicit. This album was also lost. It never got recovered either. He said that he thought he had found it on a uh, website, like someone selling it on a website a long time ago, but he did not think that it was the same one. He thought that it might have been a bootleg or something, and I might be wrong about that as well because I have a very hazy memory on what he told me about it. Platinum Stains is the name of this particular album. Platinum Stains was the album where he was trying to go into a more professional direction rather than what he did on the first three albums. With Platinum Stains, it consists of... Well, I have no idea what any of the tracks are titled. Even he doesn't remember most of them. But he said that it was an attempt at making a professional studio album. So I'm like legitimately curious to know what this one sounded like as well. Because after Platinum Stains, he released West Side Till I'm 30, which was released in 2003. And that album is my least favorite Headless album. I just could never get into that one. So I can only imagine what Platinum Stains would sound like because West Side Till I'm 30 was also an attempt at making a professional studio album. Like, he began doing beatboxing in the tracks, he started to use different vocal styles, and it's very different from the first three albums. My, my, I, I don't know what Platinum Saints is supposed to sound like, I have no clue at all what it's supposed to sound like, because the first two albums were horrorcore, which, you know, what, it was, um, Wish You Were Here and Fall, then there was Life Till Death, which is Lost Media, and then there was Platinum Stains. The first three albums were horrorcore. Now, the fifth album, which is West Side Till I'm 30, that album has a mix of horrorcore, crunk music, and gangster rap. Like, it's kind of mixing all three together. However, it does not have the best production, and there's just a lot of flaws within the album, but... That leads me to wonder if Platinum Stains was just like West Side Slum 30 or if it sounded like how hip-hop albums sounded way back in the day because, I mean, you get the point of it. It's an album that I seriously want to listen to someday. I'm curious to know what it sounds like. Needless to say, I've wanted to hear it for a very long time, but I do not know if it will ever be recovered or not. Now, one more interesting thing to note... Well, I got two more things to say about it, but I'm going to go cover this one first. I'm going to pull this out of my collection right quick. Okay, so if you look at the physical copies of, like, the newer releases by Headless, and I'm mostly referring to anything from 2005 up until now, you would notice that all of the physical copies are in... CDR cases like they are C they are they're in these slim jewel cases they're pressed on uh CDR format you know this is how it looks on most of the newer stuff however if you look on the old albums and I found this one day when I was just scrolling through images uh, shared from Headless's Instagram page you would notice that the West Side Slum 30 album and the Robin Hood's album were both in jewel cases, kind of like these are. Like, you know, it has a full design, it has a side of a case, and, you know, you get the point of it. That makes me question if Platinum Stains was also in one of these cases back when it was released. You can see West Side Till I'm 30 and Robin Hood's in, the, in a jewel case, but... Everything else released by Headless has always been in one of these slim CDR cases. I think that Platinum Stains might have been in one of the jewel cases because, once again, he said it was an attempt at making a super professional album way back in the day. 
Not sure about the first three albums, though, because I've never seen a physical copy of literally any of those. Now, that was one thing I wanted to point out. The um, Platinum Stains album could be in a jewel case. I might be wrong about it, though. Now, the next thing I want to say is that these releases were extremely limited. Like... These releases, you could not just, like, these were not requested. From what I've heard from Headless, there were only, like, 20 copies sold of each individual album of um, Life Till Death and Platinum Stains. I heard that he only made 20 copies of those albums, and he sold them all. If only 20 copies have been sold, that means that there's only 20 people in the world who own a copy of it. Possibly, I can't really say for sure. But if only 20 people have each album, that means that the chances of obtaining one of those copies is very low because I have some releases in my collection that are limited to less than 20, and some of them took me several years to get a hold of. So if these are if only 20 were pressed of both of these albums, then the chances of those getting recovered are very low, unfortunately. Now, the last thing I wanted to cover... How did they become lost to media? Because even I was curious at one point because I did I had no fucking clue how they became lost media if everything else was backed up. But I learned from Headless that the releases were at one point on a computer of his. Like he had not released it anywhere yet. He released a few CD copies of it, as I've already explained. But the files for them were not backed up anywhere. They were not on any other devices. They weren't on a hard drive or anything. And one day his computer had crashed. And when he turned the computer back on, all the files for both albums had been completely erased. And he stated that he had been looking for them for a very long time and he never could find the albums. So with that being said, they have been lost media for almost 20 years now. I really hope to hear both of these albums someday. I really hope that they get recovered. They are two albums that I... Those are the only two releases from his discography that I have not listened to yet. And I seriously want to know what these sound like. Like, I don't know which one I'd want to hear more because I love the horrorcore era. Because, you know, it's highly underrated. And I'm curious to know what his first attempt at making a professional album would sound like because that sounds like it would be a pretty interesting listen. Life Till Death and Platinum Stains, those are the two lost headless albums. I managed to obtain images of what they look like thanks to, again, Headless's Instagram. Aside from there, you can't really find the covers for either of these albums literally anywhere. Now, there are some other forms of lost media by Headless, but I cannot go into detail with these because I, I know little to nothing about them. Now, before his name was Headless, his original name was Crumb, but he released two albums under that name. He released them both when he was in the 10th grade, from what I've heard off his biography. And both of those albums are lost media, but there's little to nothing about them. Like, I, I tried to find the files for them on the MP3 archive and couldn't even find them on there, so... Those two albums are also lost, possibly won't ever be recovered, and I could not find the artwork for either of the albums. One final piece of lost media that I feel like I want to reference, and I don't know if this is an actual release or not, this is just a theory. When I was on his MySpace page, I noticed that there was a release called Best of Headless, and I managed to obtain this image of it while I was on the MySpace account. There is nothing about this release existing. It's not in the biography. It's not on the internet. I don't know if this was actually a release or if it was an abandoned project, but I'm curious to know more about it. Best of Headless, I do not know if it is a real release. All I know is that I saw an image of it on MySpace and I thought, maybe it is real, maybe it's also lost media, but I can't make any guarantees on it. But yeah. Life Till Death and Platinum Stains by Headless. They're two forms of lost media that I seriously hope to hear someday. Maybe even the Crumb albums and possibly even the Best Of albums someday if those get recovered as well. But yeah, enough about that. He's an awesome artist. He's released a lot of material. And when you've been an artist for so long, like he has, 
There is bound to be pieces of lost media within their discography. Although it sucks that the Crumb albums are gone and it sucks that the third and fourth Headless albums are gone, there is still hope that those albums may someday get recovered and I really hope it is soon because I seriously want to listen to them. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope to find them someday. And if you might know someone who has these albums, feel free to say something because, uh, like, I'm fucking desperate to listen to these because I seriously want to know what they sound like. Anyway, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all later. Have a great night. I hope you all enjoyed this video.